It's Christmas 1999. A time for gifts. A time for children. A time for Ian Lee's Christmas wish to come true. Ho, ho, ho! Ah, oh, fuck it. It's Mr. Ian Lee. Welcome to the special bumper Christmas edition of the 11 o'clock show. Before we start the festivities, please give it up for James, who'll be joining us throughout the show. Yeah. Very exciting. Listen, listen, it's Christmas! Thank you, two people there are excited by it. But it's our first Christmas special, and have we got a show for you? Well, of course we have. What kind of idiots do you think we are? In fact, it's so <laughs> special, we've had countless Christmas cards from celebrities. Three, actually. But they, they start off well. This is a lovely card from Posh Spice, and it's got written inside, wishing you the warmest wishes straight to you. And even Brooklyn's had a go at signing it there, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> oh, hang on, sorry, that's not Brooklyn, that's David Beckham's. <laughs> Never mind. Party girl Tara Palmer Tomkinson has sent us this rather strange, unusual mirror card. <laughs> and she's gone to the trouble of adding uh, a seasonal snow effect. <laughs> it works. And finally, finally, Gary Glitter touched us when he sent us. <laughs> When he sent us this delightful greeting, it's a traditional Christmas scene, some young carol singers, and inside, well, we don't actually know what it says inside, it's, it's stuck together. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> don't applaud, he's a nonce. But that's enough of this festive folly, let's get on with the show. Please welcome the girl at the top of everyone's Christmas list, Daisy Donovan! <laughs> She's just a lady. Now, Daisy... <laughs> or is she? Now, Daisy, when I say the word Christmas to you, what do you think of? Um, peace, harmony, goodwill to all men, you know, make love, not war, that sort of thing. Fantastic. Does that mean that I might get some... <laughs> <laughs> you can whistle all you want, but you ain't getting a shag. <laughs> just tell us what's coming up on tonight's Yuletide extravaganza. Well, do so, sir. Paul Garner warns us that a seasonal tipple can make you a cripple in his anti drink <laughs> driving campaign. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I was you, Paul. Fuck off, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> we'll be issuing a cracker of a challenge to this man. Hi, Maggie Murphy went to the doctor. She said I've forgotten to take my contradictive pills. <laughs> he says, you're ignorant. She says, yeah, three months. <laughs> and we'll be looking back on all the best bits of a year in the life of the Angel of Delight. Do you not think that everybody is just waiting for you to spill your beans over Margaret Thatcher? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think it's quite sensible to have the last word? I think it would be a I great idea. <laughs> uh, we'll be reviewing all the huge events of the year, politics, sport and Vanessa Felt. Starting right now with a look at the nation's favourite family of inbred Germans, the Royals. <laughs> this year's Royal Headlines. January, a happy start to the Royal New Year when Sophie and Edward announce their engagement. A friend of Sophie says the couple make a great double act. Far be it from me to point out that most great double acts do contain a straight man. <laughs> the Duke of York launches a royal website. There's controversy when the Diana page crashes. <laughs> March, it's revealed that the Queen Mum is £4 million in debt. In a statement, a royal aide said she's a bit short at the moment. A palace accountant suggests they should remove her plastic, but a palace doctor warns that her legs might fall off. May and Tom Parker Bowles' cocaine habit is exposed. He blames his mother, saying she'd been very keen to introduce him to Charlie. 
June, and the nation is lifted from the depths of despair by the low-key wedding of a minor royal. In an unusually frank interview, Edward describes the wedding night moment he shocked Sophie by proving how gay he's not. Now, I managed to take her completely by surprise. She had no idea that it was coming. of gaffes, the Duke of Edinburgh puts his foot in it once again. During a tour of China, his comments about the Great Wall looking like it had been knocked up by a bunch of paddies <laughs> leads to ugly scenes outside his hotel. September and Prince William goes fox hunting. Critics say it's the kind of behaviour that would have made his mother sick. Of course, the woman was bulimic. Anything would make her sick. <laughs> and those are our royal headlines. lost the true meaning of Christmas, but has it really become too commercial? Ian went to find out and made this special report. God, yeah. Excuse me, thank you, yeah, thank you. Excuse me, thank you. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ! <laughs> We're a few yards from where I'm standing now. I've come here to find the true meaning of Christmas. So, this is the actual place where Jesus was born, and I've heard he likes gifts, I've got him some things. Gold, couldn't afford that, so I got him some Terry's All Gold, probably being Christmas and all. Frankincense, well, some joysticks from the shop, that'll do. And myrrh, I haven't got a fucking clue what that is, but apparently it's a bit like soap. So I got some stuff from the body shop, that'll do. <laughs> and my guide to this holiest of sites was Ziad Al-Khatib, the head of the Bethlehem Tourist Police. This is like an immediate representation of the manger, where the lamps are, yeah, just yeah. down there. I see. Is that the baby Jesus in a manger there? This is like a doll, in a way. It, it, it should be a representation. We take it in this way, but I see it like a small doll in a way. It's not a Barbie doll, but... <laughs> this, is, this is the main Christmas tree, is it? The main Christmas tree, sorry. sorry. What? I've got to ask you a question. Yeah. What is so special about that tree? Because there's, there's three trees side by side. Why has that one been chosen? Has it got no religious significance? No, nothing at all. I've been think... blessed by Jesus. <laughs> no, I don't think tree so. tree that Jesus had a nap under one night when he was a bit tired. No, that was another one. <laughs> After all that religion, I decided to get back to the real meaning of Christmas, shopping. When we got the tickets to come here, the tourist guy said, oh, Jesus will be coming back, second coming, is that? Well, nobody knows, but uh, everybody is uh, expecting that. And will he be welcome in the shop if he pops along? <laughs> you think you'd sell him some stuff? Yeah, <laughs> you'd love it. Now, it's absolutely beautiful. Again, another tasteful representation. Looks like some spunk there. <laughs> Gloria, who's, is this the name of someone you can personalise? Gloria, no, it's, it's Glory. Doesn't look very happy there, does she? she? Well, she's never been happy here in the Holy Land. Oh, life. right, yeah. <laughs> they crucified her son. Yeah, so that would <laughs> piss anyone off a little bit. Are you having as much Father Christmas merchandise as I'd expect? Because in England, you, you go to all these places, Father Christmas, Father Christmas, Father yeah, Christmas. Yeah, well, you see, we sell good religious items. That's fine. <laughs> you really have to love Jesus to have one of those. That's incredible, isn't it? Again, we've got more eggs, more, more toot and, and crap down there. <laughs> now, again, what's, this is very tastefully done. What's in those little files there? Those There's little... three things in there. Dirt, water and oil, olive oil. Oh, you really know how to rip people off. Why are you selling <laughs> dirt and olive oil? It's a three symbols uh, from the Holy Land. All right. Does, and does anyone actually buy this shit? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Fantastic. Any, have you sold any of those to, to any English people? Yes. Yeah, stitch them up, nice one. I like it, a big good style. <laughs> what sort of person would buy one of these? A twat or something? <laughs> what are all these pictures on here? Are these? Uh, Jerusalem. These, these are all Jerusalem. The Stations of the Cross in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. There's, of course, the Last Supper. So that's great. When, you, you, when you're writing stuff at home or drawing a big cock and balls, with spunk coming out, <laughs> uh, just to shock your friends, you've still got the religious theme going. So at all the time you can be thinking of religion, can't you? Yes. you? Do you imagine you're drawing something rude? Oh, Jesus Christ, you've got that there. Fantastic. <laughs> so there we have it. It seems the people that visit Bethlehem are genuinely trying to get away from a commercial Christmas, but end up being sold a load of old shit. This has been Ian Lee, the 11 o'clock show, The Holy Land. <laughs> Christmas. Peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Well, unless you're a nasty sod from Reading, please give a frosty welcome to Ricky Gervais. Nice and sweet, it does it. Nice and sweet, it does it. Dice it every time. Don't, so don't 
Really encourage Ricky. them. What rubbish have you got for us this week? Well, you've embarrassed yourself because I've made an effort. Right? <laughs> it's a Christmas special. Go on. And under this, it's something very special. Okay? This is the future of home entertainment. It took me a long time to make this, but you can play it at home, you can play it by yourself or with your family. It's the world famous Ricky Gervais's Penis Puppet Theatre. <laughs> This at home. All you do is you Ricky? just press what? You weren't expecting that, were you? No, I, I can't use mine because it's not in equity. I have to use a stunt one, okay? Here's one. One full of fun. Just wrap your John Thomas in tin foil. That's obviously Robocop. Uh, little tricorn hat and cape. Dick Turpin. Or Dick Whittington. <laughs> or Dick Whittington, but I didn't want a cat involved again. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, this took me a long time. That's Schlong John Silver. Do they get any, any better than this, or is this the uh, standard we've got? Uh, waiting for Gonad. <laughs> Not a lot happens, but there's two involved in that. I've got the boys involved. <laughs> I know you don't like it. You're thinking it's not for the family and that ladies can't play. Well, you're wrong, you see. You get a nice little desert scene there. And, uh, What's that? That's a donut to represent female genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> a little headdress. Oh, come on. Lawrence of the Labia. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. You go. You go. You go. You win. I'll take the Labia with you. I didn't even do Felicio Nelson. <laughs> take your donut. <laughs> Daisy, you're drunk at the Christmas party. What should you never do? Snog the boss. Ah. Snog the boss's car. No, Daisy, you must never drink and drive. Mm. As Paul Garner reveals in this disturbing report, people who don't like Paul Garner should look away now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, great office party, guys, but I ought to be making tracks. Hold on, Paul, have a drink. Have one for the road. It is Christmas. No, I'd better not. I'm driving. What? Are you some sort of a puff or something? No way. I love a drink. <laughs> You're right, of course. This isn't real. But it could so easily be a scene from any office Christmas party across the country. Unlike a lot of twats who might drink like a mick and then climb behind the wheel of a car, I simply say no. I don't drink and drive. Every Christmas, some knobhead like this rolls out of the pub after a skin full of grog and thinks he's safe to drive but in a matter of minutes, he'll go from dog and duck to dead and fucked. <laughs> this year, try and remember the three-point plan which could turn a driver into a survivor. Yeah, it'd be really nice if you could come to the party next week. All oh, right, thanks, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of us going down there, but it won't be... Spend the day of the party befriending the office loser. Um, you will drive us home after, so we can have a drink, won't you? He'll be so delighted at being part of the crowd, he'll stay off the source so he can drive you home. And you and your mate can get blitzed on strong Dutch froth. Get matey with an Arab. He'll definitely drive, as their religion forbids them from drinking, leaving you free to gannet the grog till the early hours. Or better still, touch up some bloke's missus, start a brawl and get a free lift home with a filth. <laughs> so then what, you gave him a smack in the teeth? Yeah. <laughs> nice one. These guys have seen it all before. That's why they've invited me here to the police test track in Essex to find out just how much my driving ability and reactions are affected after a couple of drinks. OK, Paul, so you've had four units of alcohol. Yep. Uh, let's start her up and see how quickly you can react to my command to stop. OK. OK? Let's make this test a little bit more realistic and get a proper size party night piss up portion down my neck. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I was you, Paul. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Although, as I did, you may feel you're quite capable of driving, your reactions are drastically limited. And instead of finding yourself stopping in the nick of time, you'll find yourself stopping for some time in the nick. <laughs> now some poor recovery guy's gonna have to spend his Christmas picking this turkey apart, working out what's a wing 
And what's a leg? <laughs> this must make you either on the piss or rest in piss. The choice is yours. Think before you drink, before you drive, like an arsehole. <laughs> a time for looking back and remembering the good and the bad and who better to trip down memory lane with than our good friend John Peel. John, thank you for joining us today. I just can't seem to work out Johnny Harris speed. John, before you go on, we've got a surprise for you. Take a look at this. What have we here? This is Christmas top of the pop, but we couldn't get nowhere. It was too busy, so we have Mr. John Peel. Say hello, John. Hello, John. Oh, John, I saw Mummy kissing Santa Claus. Let's hope their mummies don't see us pulling these Christmas crackers, eh, John? So the answer is have a really tune. It's the land of make believe by the mighty books. Fizz. You must have so many happy memories of the Christmas Top of the Pops, John. Well, to be quite honest, I never really enjoyed <laughs> doing it. I mean, the trouble with working with someone like Sam... Before you say any more, <laughs> John, we've got a special treat for you. Yes, we're reuniting you with your old Radio 1 colleague. It's the Jimmy Savile. <laughs> <laughs> what have we here, then? Do you remember that? <laughs> the old days, the dolly birds with the party. <laughs> well, to be honest, that wasn't really the Christmas Top of the Pops that I remember. I mean, I, I remember one time where Edie Armin ended up having a fight with Slade over the Radio now, 1 buffet. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> I remember the garlic dip flying past now, me. I have here a letter the... here from the young people of Seven Oaks, Hands and Hearts for Jesus movement. <laughs> well, I was going to tell you about the time that DLT ended up dancing with Chow Chester. Rem... Could you fix it for John Peel to make Cliff Richards' Millennium Prayer number one in his Festive 50? Now, John, can you help us? Well, I think, as you know, Jimmy, the Festive 50 is actually voted for by the dear listeners, and uh, I've counted up the votes already. Now, and as not far so as I fast, can see, Captain. No... What I have here is none other than one sack full of 2,000 letters from our good friends from Seven Oaks voting for Sir Cliff. Well, you see, I've already counted them, and as far as I know, the four are going to be number one. And How many uh, votes have they got? Well, they've only actually got 15 votes, but uh, <laughs> Mark Smith will be absolutely furious <laughs> if he doesn't get... Don't be a Christmas humbug. Here's the record. Everybody's been voting for you. <laughs> well, I suppose if everyone has actually been voting for this record, I should, uh, I should actually play it, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's the most nauseating piece of shit that I've ever heard, and, uh, <laughs> Oh, dear, what a Christmas screw! <laughs> that kind of thing makes me want to puke. So, uh, instead of that, I think we're going to play uh, my favourite Christmas number one. It's The Undertones and Teenage <laughs> Kicks, but, uh, unfortunately, Kershaw's actually nicked me copy. It's great to see such a marvellous Christmas double act back together, boys. Could you give us all here a Christmas present and introduce our band? Well, to be honest, I'd rather not. Please. Actually. Please. That's easy. Fabaroni. Now, from one James to another, go on, Captain, do the business. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> this is James, and, uh, just like Fred Stare, which actually reminds me of one time a long time ago. Uh, 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 uh. Hollywood! 
Christmas is a time for giving, which means it's a time for buying. But will we buy anything if we think it's a bargain? We sent our rogue street trader to France to find out. See you after the break. British beef! British beef! Get your British beef! Fed on pure grass. Not like in France where they feed it on shit. No offence, but they do. It's banned in this country. There's an embargo, isn't there? An embargo. Get Chirac! No, they just been. Don't pay no attention to them. They're talking bollocks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lovely. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. British beef. Come on, Letty. Up you go. I mean, you're hoping to kill our princess, but you won't buy our beef. <laughs> There's the justice in that. guest Frank Carson and there's one angel who's always on the top of our Christmas tree and we'll be taking a look at her most delightful moments later now a Christmas show wouldn't be complete without looking at Christmas gifts and this year the biggest selling gift is the who wants to be a millionaire board game in fact it's so popular it's sold out in all the shops so we can't actually show you one but it's identical to the TV show minus the lighting and the tension the music the audience the sense of occasion and the prospect of winning a life-altering amount of money still on the plus side you do get to spend Boxing Day listening to dad going <laughs> Um, is that your final answer? Great impression. <laughs> but just because you're flogging a TV tie-in, it doesn't mean you've got a hit gift on your hands. We've trawled through the pound shops of Britain and spent four pounds on some of this year's least popular presents. But we think they're worth a second look. One telly tie-in that's failed to set the tills alight is this, the Nicholas Lindhurst action figure. He comes <laughs> with a realistic stoop and a range of clothing, including a trench coat, a jumper and a hilarious mum outfit from those fantastic WH Smith sets. Also, if you pull the string at the back, it delivers some of his most hilarious lines. Uh -huh. uh, of course, don't forget. Uh -huh. It was a lot of fun for the kids. Another TV tie-in being left on the shelf is the Daniela Westbrook snowstorm. <laughs> Shake it up. But, uh, where's all the snow? Well, you can't see that because it's up her nose. If you've still got some energy left after Christmas dinner, why not have a crazy old bounce around on the Vanessa Felt space hopper? Brilliant. It's just like a normal space hopper, except, except it spends quite a lot more time crying in front of the mirror. <laughs> Get off your face, just like you. Hop it. Don't keep applauding him. No, don't encourage don't him. him. Come on. And for all you fans of Robot Wars, there's still time to nip down to Argos for the Battle of the Supermen. Christopher Reeve versus Stephen Hawking. Total Control <laughs> Racing Three, set. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh. Brilliant. He fell off again. Fantastic. It's got working headlights, chicanes, and a prepaid postcard to send off a complaint to Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> and those were the worst-selling tasteless TV tie-ins this Christmas. Peace at last. Peace at last. What a year for Ireland. For the first time in living memory, Lady Peace looks like she may stick around in the troubled isle. But will the new assembly really work? Will the armed factions really give up their weapons? Questions like these require a strong, clear and independent mind. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Frank Carson. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's a pleasure How to meet you. How lovely to appear in front of a live audience. <laughs> well, most of them. Frank, you were honoured by the Pope in 1988 for all your charity work in the yes. Catholic community. You spent 15 minutes with him. He kissed you and said you were a wonderful now, man. Now, hold on. But he'd never heard of you, had he? Well, I don't know. 
reckon you've actually got a picture of him straight after he met you. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Now, Frank, we've got a challenge. We, we know you... Frank, we know you love doing things for charity, so we've got a challenge for you, OK? Right. If you can resist saying your well-known Christmas-inspired catchphrase, it's a cracker, then we will give real money to charity, OK? You right. up for it? Are you up for it? Of course I'm up for it. Frank, what is this? <laughs> uh, can I phone a friend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Uh... It's a pantomime costume for Ronnie Corbett. Fantastic, that's close enough. <laughs> 50 pounds to charity. Yeah, what else? It could be. Hold it up again, and the audience will love this one. It's a Christmas suppository. <laughs> Cheeky! Don't tell me that about that. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, I do apologise. Um, now, Good boy, Frank, then. you gave up drinking in 1987 saying I was Who tired. said that? Did you not? I gave up in 1987, but I'd already started in 1964. <laughs> oh. I'm on again in 1992. You're back on the booze, are you? I am, yes, indeed. Somebody threw a petrol bomb at me and I drank it. Um, now, the peace, peace process has been the a peace big... Process, yeah. The peace process, yeah. He's making those teeth in for the dog. Go ahead. <laughs> the peace process has been a great success, <laughs> yeah, I... hasn't it? Now, as a comedian, you must be gutted, because there's a lot of... A lot of jokes that you don't tell yeah. anymore. I'm glad you don't tell uh, jokes anymore. A friend of mine spent £700 on a bulletproof vest. I got shot up the ass. Time now to look back at a year in politics. Here's a roundup of 1999's political headlines. January, and Peter Tattle fulfills a pun writer's dream when he was pulled off by a man in a uniform after bashing his bishop. <laughs> the American judicial system demands DNA samples of both Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. They save time and get both from a swab of her throat. <laughs> March, and Monica Lewinsky publishes her book and tours the country claiming that the media put words in her mouth. In particular, the words, the, presidents and cock. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher offers support to her torturer friend, General Pinochet. She says, I'll do what I can, but my hands are tied. He says, that's just the way I like it. <laughs> April, and with the Northern Ireland peace process close to breaking point, secret bug footage reveals the divisions in the Sinn Féin leadership. Martin, what am I going to say in our statement? I'll tell you what, Jerry. I'll give you a fiver if you call Trimble a penis. No, Martin. Ah, no. oh, come on, Jerry. I'll give you a tenner if you use the C word. No. I'm telling you, Jerry, you look cool. <laughs> November. The papers reveal that Tony Blair is set to be a father again, prompting suggestions that there's been a leak in Downing Street. <laughs> and as Geoffrey Archer is revealed to have lied over the Monica Coughlin affair, he heads abroad to strengthen his alibi for the night in question. Mr. Archer! <laughs> December, there are worries that John Prescott takes things too literally after Blair asks the Deputy Prime Minister to do a big job on the buses. <laughs> and finally, in the new Northern Ireland, the spirit of reconciliation knows no bounds as Loyalist and Republican terror groups team up for a special charity blind date. Will it be terrorist number one, who'd love to decommission your arms? Or number two, who says, I'm a light hearted kind of guy? Or will it be number three, who'd love to stop you in a roadblock and shoot you? <laughs> and that was the 11 o'clock show's political year. People say that a week is a long time in politics, but they also say that time flies when you're having fun. Well, I've been having fun with politics all year, so how long is that? 35 hours. <laughs> exactly right, Ian. But we don't have time to show it all now, do we? No. Idiot. But the box set will be available in the new year at the very reasonable price of £14.99, the perfect gift for all occasions. Or you can just save your money and tape it now. <laughs> Can I talk about the IRA incident? Yeah. Because uh, for our viewers, these Irishmen launched a mortar attack on Number 10 while you were in a cabinet meeting. Yes, that's right. And that must have been absolutely terrifying with, you know, mortar blowing everywhere, the windows blowing in. I mean, Lord Hurd 
What was it like being blown by an Irishman? It was very, very odd. Are you worried about being blown again? No, not at all. No, it really wouldn't, it wouldn't enter my mind. Now, your predecessor had to deal with the Iron Curtain. Do you think now in Europe there are beef curtains? No, I don't think that's uh, right at all. You were a keen rower at Oxford. No, I wasn't. I was the Cox, and I then made 18 stone. I was going to say, because I saw a picture of you. Yes. Um, and I've seen some cocks in my time, but I have to say you're the biggest cocks I've ever seen. <laughs> Amazing. Don't say that too quickly. <laughs> but it must have been such a coup, in a way, to be individually fingered by Tony Blair. But we weren't individually fingered by Tony Blair. <laughs> And in politics, you give heart, you give soul, you give head, am I wrong? You're absolutely right. <laughs> Is it a case of A, B, D? What's missing? C. Do you? Yes. But is it one eye or two? One eye or two? Two. <laughs> Did you think, that, you know, as you entered into it, yeah. you know, if it's the last thing I do, I'll lick Mrs Thatcher? No, I mean, that wasn't, I mean, that was an absurdity. I couldn't lick Mrs Thatcher. I wasn't contesting her seat. Do you not think that everybody is just waiting for you to spill your beans over Margaret Thatcher? Oh, yes, I mean, don't, don't you think it's quite sensible to have the last word? I think it would be a great she, idea. She was very dogmatic, uh, as dogmatic as a communist. Was well, she the kind of person you'd give a pearl necklace to? I would give a pearl necklace to. Oh, no, I wouldn't give a pearl necklace to anyone except my wife. <laughs> or maybe you. It was very, very nice to me to the left of the interview. Well, well, I hope so. Christmas is a bit like Easter, only Jesus doesn't die, and instead of giving eggs, many people feel depressed and sob in the dark throughout heartbeat. <laughs> it's also the chance to sit around the table with relatives you haven't seen since the Christmas before and realise that actually you hate them much more than you ever realised. Most importantly, it's a time for giving. You give your grand something she really likes, and she gives you a detailed account of the day her neighbour's hip collapsed. <laughs> all in all, it's a rollicking good laugh, and then there's one foot in the grave. Brilliant. So, to make sure your Christmas goes with a swing, here's our exclusive guide to getting into the festive spirit. Our Christmas do's, do's and, and don'ts. Do. Enter into the Christmas spirit with a family game of charades. Don't. Ask your grand to mime deep throat. It will make for awkward, <laughs> uncomfortable viewing. Do. Enjoy the family dinner with a hearty giggle at the Christmas cracker jokes. Don't... Say to your nan, I know what the big chimney said to the little chimney. Now take that stupid hat off and wipe those sprouts off your moustache, bitch. <laughs> Do. Add to the festive spirit by putting up a few decorations. Don't. Sling so much tat on your house that it looks like a tinker's truck stop. <laughs> Do. Call on your elderly neighbour to check that they're not having a lonely Christmas. Don't... Bang on the wall shouting, Hypothermia watch! Are you still alive, Widow Jones? <laughs> Do. Wash up for Mum after Christmas dinner. Don't... Use the loo after Dad. <laughs> Do. Invite Daniela Westbrook in for a festive drink. She's very sad after being let go by EastEnders. Don't... Forget that a dog is for life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> and that was our list of Christmas do's and don'ts. <laughs> now, some people say that Santa doesn't exist, but I know that he does, because every year I send him a list and I get exactly what I asked for. What did you ask for last year? A PlayStation, and I got it. Uh, Ian, you know that wasn't Santa. You kept mentioning the nice people at Sony on the telly and, weirdly enough, they sent you one. <laughs> <laughs> Two can play at that game. Who knows? This year, I might be getting the quintessence of luxury motoring, an Aston Martin, or that most sophisticated of timepieces, a Rolex watch. <laughs> you, haven't got the, you haven't got the clue what you're doing here. I'm expecting the ambassador's choice, Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> but will we all get what we want? Not if Ricky Gervais has his way. Hello? What would you like for Christmas? Pokemon. Ah, Pokemon. Complete set. The complete set. The complete set of Pokemon would cost hundreds of pounds. 
So I'm going to be honest with you. The chance of you getting that are slim to none, and I'll tell you why. I know your parents. You live on Whitley Estate, don't you? Yeah. The little money your mother does earn selling Polaroids to herself to readers' wives, she blows on Bingo and Jingo on the top rank. Yeah? Polaroids, I might add, that usually feature herself, starkers, climbing into a sink trying to lick her own tit. The dad's in hurry again. Yeah. Three months at Majesty's Butlins, Wandsworth. Hmm. I don't think Pokemon will be the first thing on their minds this Christmas. Your best bet is get out there thieving. Little fella like you could get through any open window. Make your father proud of you as well. If you haven't got the bottle for that, you could pimp for your fat, prozzy sister. Take a commission, obviously. Uh, get us some new customers willing to pay more than a fiver. I'd start with Lion first. No, you won't be getting Pokemon. Um, sorry, but what sort of Santa would I be if I just got your hopes up? You know, you should set your sights very, very low in life and do the lottery. Merry Christmas, kid. On you go. end of part two but don't go away because it's christmas the big knobs at channel four are letting us do a whole extra bit so coming up in part three we've got more from ricky gervais's wonky santa and ian chooses his religion for the new millennium but before the break please take heed of this special christmas public information film <laughs> Daisy says, never forget that a drunken screw under the mistletoe is for life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> Welcome back to part three of the 11 o'clock show Christmas special. Just time now to check how Frank Carson's getting on. Frank, what have you got there? That is a dry wheat beer savoury snack. Do <laughs> 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 I tell him? Well done, Frank. <laughs> Another 50 quid to charity. Right. They say when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So when I was in Israel, I did this. Time to look back at 12 months of celebrity shenanigans with our 1999 Showbiz News Roundup. March and Posh Spice gives birth to a baby weighing six pounds two ounces. The baby's weight has not been revealed. <laughs> Posh calls in Brooklyn because that's where he was conceived. Apparently Beckham had originally wanted to call it the baby front bottom. <laughs> Kelly Brook resigns from the Big Breakfast to work on other projects. A geography project, a history project and a spelling test. <laughs> August, and as Bonehead quits Oasis, the Gallagher brothers deny that their last album was rubbish as a result of their heavy drug intake. <laughs> <laughs> and that was this year's Showbiz News. Now, just time to see how the nasty bearded bastard's getting on. No, not Bill Oddy. It's Ricky Gervais' <laughs> Sleazy Santa. Hello. And what do you want for Christmas? PlayStation. PlayStation? You're from the orphanage, aren't you? Yeah. Can you imagine what sort of public expenditure that would be for poor kids like you to play Crash Bandicoot? It's enough of a strain on social services feeding and clothing you. And I don't really think it's the taxpayer's fault that you haven't got parents, is it? No. What you'll be getting this Christmas is the shit stuff or broken toys that rich kids got last year, board games or something. And don't be fooled by the compendium. Ooh, 99 games. Yeah, a chessboard with Ludo on the back. Dice and a pack of cards. Brilliant. Um, or, what would you say if Santa got you a new home with a new mummy and daddy for Christmas? Yeah. Well, I can only accept the first answer. You blew that with PlayStation, so on you go. What's the matter, darling? The fat kid here. <laughs> future now it's only just begun at least that's what Slade sing on their Christmas hit but we say fuck that what about the year that's just gone for some it was a good year for some it was a bad year so let's find out for whom it was a good year and for whom it was a bad year for in this special Christmas edition of good, good news, news bad, bad news. news good news 
Paul McCartney gets a Parkinson special. Bad news. So does Dudley Moore. <laughs> Good news. Pets now have their own passports. Bad news. More dogs than ever are going to Magaluf. <laughs> Good news. Trade Minister Stephen Byers finally admitted to having a 17-year-old love child. Bad news. For the woman who had to give birth to a teenager. <laughs> Bad news. While trying to adjust his TV aerial to watch a Man United match, Rod Hull fell to his death. Good news. It was a draw, but United went through on aggregate. <laughs> Good news. The ban on gays in the military was lifted. Bad news. They all want to be in the crack troops. <laughs> Bad news. Construction workers were caught dealing drugs in the Millennium Dome. Good news. At least there's something worth going there for. <laughs> Good news. Sting caught his nuts in the spoke of his bike and writhed around in unbearable pain for three hours. Bad news. We just made that one up. <laughs> and that was 99's. Good, Good news, news, bad, bad news. news. <laughs> Daisy, do you sometimes think that people today fail to remember the true meaning of Christmas? No, Ian, I don't think so. No one ever forgets to buy presents today. Daisy, I was talking about the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Oh. But is the Son of God for everyone? I went back to Israel to find out. Um. It was somewhere near here that Jesus Christ superstar came down from heaven on a Yamaha. <laughs> Unfortunately, he did a skid, tragically killing a kid. And then to top it all, he bashed his nuts on a dustbin lid. <laughs> I've come here to Galilee to find out about the real Jesus Christ to see whether he can play a part in my life. How do I become a Christian? Well, you could be born one, or you could uh, uh, take up a course of instruction and uh, convert to being a Christian. Those are the two, the two main routes. Now, aren't Christians just really, really dull? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Think uh, of all the Irish people you know, an awful lot of them Christians. A lot of them are drunks as well. well have fun. Jesus was tempted. Are you ever tempted? Not often, no. What, what tempts you? Uh, I'm not sure at the moment. Would it be fags, booze? No. Drugs? No. Wank nags? No. <laughs> Flipping your finger around when you crack them off? No. <laughs> what is hell like? Hell, to me, is um, the absence of God. Mm. Being without God. I, well, I, it's not it's as bad total as... Total darkness. Well, total darkness isn't bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it would be all fire and prodding on your bum and stuff. So. A lot of people are going to find out. <laughs> I was slightly frightened by Galilee, so I decided to head for Jerusalem, spiritual home to three of the world's largest religions. <laughs> if I became Jewish, what, what would I get from God? Something you can't explain. You can't explain what can you, you Can you explain that for us? What? Can you explain that for us? Oh, being a Jewish is something you can't explain. You feel it. Can you, can you explain that for the people at home? <laughs> no, we have to be Jewish to understand. If Jesus and Muhammad were standing here now and were having a, a, a punch up, a fist fight, which one do you think would, would win? Muhammad. Is it? Yes. Now, to, does having a gun make you nearer to God? No, I'm in the army. <laughs> that will explain, I can tell by your uniform. How do you come to you come back from the dead? Yes. Oh, like a zombie eating flesh and things? No, with the glorified body. Um, my friend Steve was saying that when you go to heaven you actually piss honey and, and shit gold. Is that not true? No, no. He won't be going there. My friend Steve? He won't go there. If that's his imagination, he won't be going there. I, I do some quite outrageous stuff in the bedroom. Would that have to stop if I became a Christian? You do what now? Some quite outrageous stuff in the bedroom. With, 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 your, with your wife or who? With, with my girlfriend, yeah. With your girlfriend? Oh, that's a sin, brother. Uh -oh. oh, you are a sinner. You would not trap me with that one. That's right. Well, my journey has brought me here to the River Jordan, the place where Jesus himself was baptized. And if I intend to give my life and soul over to Christ and Christianity, now is the time, and this is certainly the place to do it. But to be honest, can't really be bothered. It's me and Lee, the 11 o'clock show, River Jordan. way to the heart of the Christian faith, to the very place that Jesus was baptised by John the aptly named Baptist, and you just couldn't be asked, could you? Well, Daisy, I have actually been thinking. I've decided that Christianity isn't the religion for me in the next millennium. So what are you going to be? 
Well, Daisy, the man I'm going to worship was born in 563 BC. Not many people know, but his real name is Gotama. I first did him in karaoke at the King's Arms in Croydon, actually, and all my friends say I do look a lot like him. Because tonight, Daisy, I'm going to be Buddha. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, in Lee's Buddha. <laughs> for this special Christmas edition of the 11 o'clock show. But before we go, just time to see how Frank Carson is getting on. Frank, what have you got there? It's a chubby, tubby, <laughs> hard-drinking Scottish forensic psychologist with family problems. <laughs> well, uh, Frank, you've just raised another £50 for charity. What's the total now, Daisy? Well, Frank managed to avoid the C-word three times tonight, which means he's raised a grand total of £150 for the charity of our choice. Brilliant. And that charity is Ian Paisley's Orphans of the Orange Order. Fantastic, Frank. Well done. Well done, Frank. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and have a Merry Christmas and an anticlimactic New Year, obviously. We'll be back on your tellies in February. See you in the year 2000. And here to play us out are James with Crash. Good night. Good night. <laughs> A diva, a leva, a lawyer, imagine, imagine. A fever, a vision, derision, imagine, imagine. Someone got hurt, someone got high, someone got left behind the line. Someone got hurt, someone got high, someone got left behind. behind. All of your mail is on a trip. A letter, a Judas, etc., etc. A hotel, a motel, a motive, imagine, imagine. Someone got hurt, someone got high, someone got left behind the lines. I saw someone got hurt, someone got high, some of them left the rest behind. I love your mail